Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today I'll be giving you guys an in-depth look at my new daily driver, a 2015 Fiat 500 Abarth. As with all of my reviews, I'm going to cover all of the ins and outs and take this thing on a thorough drive. Of course, I'll get plenty of sound clips too. Unless I'm driving one of the demo vehicles for the reviews that you guys see on the channel, this is what I'm running in. I absolutely love it. I've had it for about three months now. It only has 23,000 miles and it's very clean. It also has pretty much every factory option you can tack on an Abarth in 2015. And somebody's previously upgraded it with a bunch of, you know, extra tech and stuff to kind of bring it up into 2023, so to speak. The best way to describe these cars is exhilarating. I've had a bunch of experience with these cars over the years, but my fondest memories by far were back in 2014 when I had the honor to drive in the Gumball 3000. I drove a US spec Abarth from Florida to New York, and when we flew over to Scotland, I drove a 595 50th Anniversario from Scotland through England, France, Spain, and down to Ibiza. It was so cool. And I'm so happy and, and, and feel very fortunate that I get to call this car my own because it brings a smile to my face every time I see it, especially when I start it up because these things are so loud and, and aggressive sounding. I mean, just, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> of course, there's a lot to cover in this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to give a big shout out to Williams Buick GMC out of Charlotte, North Carolina for making this an awesome experience. I've got their contact info down in the description box below, so if you're looking for your next new or used car, definitely check them out. Those guys are awesome. In the late 1950s, Carl Abarth believed that race cars with brilliant performance could be derived from small, lightweight, everyday cars. Faithful to the small but wicked saying coined for Abarth's early offerings, the Fiat 500 Abarth offers one of the most visceral driving experiences in its segment. Inspired by the racing traditions that made Abarth a success on international racetracks, it was first offered in North America for the 2012 model year, after being sold across Europe since 2007. The Abarth offers performance and precision, purposeful and aggressive styling, and a high power to weight ratio, all at an attainable price. Being fairly limited in production, they're not a very common sight. Unfortunately, at least in North America, the Abarth was discontinued after the 2019 model year along with the rest of the standard 500 lineup. To this day, these cars offer an incredible value when it comes to fun and practical motoring. Being such a small car, it's not for everyone, but I believe these cars never got the recognition they deserved in our market, especially with how rapid the industry has changed in just the last five years. New, affordable, sporty cars are nearly extinct. Relative affordability is one thing, but unfortunate dealer markups, at least with some things, have thrown a big wrench into the market. I've been wanting to get into another small car for a while now. After much consideration, I decided the Abarth was exactly what I was looking for. Not only is it fun, but it gets excellent fuel economy and has a surprising amount of interior room. For those not familiar with these cars, the Abarth is significantly different from a standard Fiat 500, 
cosmetically and mechanically. To improve aerodynamics while creating the necessary space required for the Abar specific engine, the front fascia is more pronounced and sits 2.7 inches ahead of the 500's signature whiskers and logo face, recalling vintage Abarth styling treatments. The Abarth shield floats on a thin surface that serves as an additional air intake. Below, the spread of intakes offer broader openings than a standard 500. For a more aggressive look, a blacked out fascia accent integrates projector beam fog lamps and helps direct air for engine cooling. Twin nostrils are positioned on the front edges of the fascia to maximize airflow through the intercoolers. More aggressive Abarth design side skirts provide a vertical and athletic profile while highlighting the car's iconic curves. An assortment of unique Abarth wheels up to 17 inches in diameter fill the flared wheel arches and are designed to provide additional ventilation for the upgraded brake system. Abarth shields can be found on both rear quarter panels, which feature a shot-through tricolor arrow. For even more Abarth style, optional body-side exterior decals pay homage to the brand's historic models and provide the new rendition with a track-ready look. Available in red, black, or white, the signature Triple Strike logo runs horizontally across the lower body side and dissipates into a gradient rearward. If equipped, color-harmonized exterior mirror caps are included to match the stripes. From the rear, a large liftgate-mounted spoiler extends the roofline of the Abarth and improves the vehicle's aerodynamic behavior by creating additional downforce. Below, the two-piece Abarth-styled rear fascia accentuates the road-holding stance and optimizes airflow output with its black-accented rear diffuser. In addition, symmetric twin exhaust cutouts deliver a powerful look, with large concentric double-tip exhaust finishers. The 2015 Abarth was offered at a starting price of just $22,395. Fiat also offered a cabrio version that featured a power-operated cloth top with a few opening positions that could be utilized depending on how fast you were going. The biggest drawback with the cabrio is that you lose a lot of the cargo capacity you'd have with the hatchback. This example is equipped with several optional extras, including premium leather trim bucket seats, the Beats audio package, the Comfort Convenience Group, red mirror caps with body side stripes, 16-inch forged wheels, and the Scorpion package by Mopar, which included a chrome Abarth fuel filler door, an Abarth license plate frame, Abarth all-weather floor mats, and Abarth valve stem caps. There were four colors offered in 2015. This color is known as Granito Luciente, or Granite Crystal. It was the only metallic option. The total MSRP for this example with destination was $27,420. Something else that I find pretty cool is that this car has an aftermarket sunroof. Made by Webasto, it was a dealer installed option featuring multiple programmable functions and a vented roll up sunshade made from the roof liner. It doesn't take up much headroom inside, which is great, and it brightens up the cabin quite a bit. While it's not everyone's cup of tea, I love it and use it quite frequently. The Abarth came standard with 16 by 6.5 inch cast aluminum wheels that featured a race inspired design and were fitted with 195 45 all season tires that offered great all around grip and low noise characteristics. The standard wheels are finished in gray with painted pockets and a red accented scorpion center cap that covered the lug bolts. The tires on all Abarths were actually inflated to a higher pressure to optimize the suspension tuning. When cold, the tires should be filled to 38 PSI. 2015 models were offered with three additional wheel options. These wheels in particular measure the same as the standard wheels, but they're lighter weight forged aluminum. They feature a more intricate spoke design and are finished in hyper black. For an extra degree of handling, you can also opt for 17 by 7 inch forged aluminum wheels, either in gloss white or gloss black. 
they would have been wrapped in 205 40 three season performance tires. The Abarth benefits from a higher performance brake system and a specially tuned electronic stability control system designed for at the limit driving. At the front, Abarths feature 2.1 inch diameter single piston front calipers with semi metallic pads for greater stopping power. Larger 11.1 inch diameter internally ventilated front rotors provide additional surface heat dissipation to mitigate brake fade compared to the standard 500's 10.1 inch front discs. The solid rear rotors span 9.4 inches and are clamped down by single piston calipers that also use semi metallic pads. Red painted calipers were standard. With this setup, the car can stop from 60 miles an hour and about 117 feet with excellent pedal feel. Anti-lock brakes with brake assist was standard. The Abarth tuned ESC system features a three mode calibration to maximize the car's handling capabilities on and off the track. When ESC is selected from on to partial off or full off, the Abarth's innovative torque transfer control system maximizes throttle performance during on throttle cornering. The 15.1 to 1 steering gear ratio is 10% quicker than a standard 500 for enhanced responsiveness and maneuverability. It also offers a much better feel that's perfectly fitting for a performance car. Compared to a 500 Sport, the Abarth's uniquely tuned electronic power steering calibration offers increased steering response and feedback. The steering takes just 2.3 turns to go from lock to lock. The turning diameter is 37.6 feet. The Abarth also features an enhanced front and rear suspension design to deliver the precision handling, steering, and refinement needed for high performance driving. Compared with the front suspension design of the 500 Sport, the Abarth has a unique McPherson suspension with a 40% stiffer spring rate and a 0.6 inch lower ride height for improved handling and minimal body roll. Abarth designed cast iron front lower control arms provide improved lateral stiffness while an increase in negative camber to negative one and a half degrees delivers improved grip and steering precision. Dual valve frequency selective damping Coney front shock absorbers replace the 500 standard twin tube units to deliver an innovative two in one solution. The patented technology provides the road holding and handling characteristics needed for maximum grip and performance. In addition, the FSD system actively filters out high frequency suspension inputs from uneven road surfaces and adjusts for improved comfort and smoothness. The Abarth's beefier rear suspension design takes the 500 Sport's twist beam design further, with 40% more torsional rigidity with strengthened coil spring supports for greater durability. An Abarth specific 0.87 inch solid rear stabilizer bar increases cornering grip. For improved handling, minimal body roll, and ride height control when fully loaded, the Abarth's rear springs are 20% stiffer and offer a 0.6 inch drop in ride height to complement the front setup. These cars were designed, developed, and tuned to deliver the responsiveness, control, and precision for high performance driving and enduring capabilities needed for track use. The Abarth is powered by a unique turbocharged variant of Fiat's 1.4 liter multi-air four-cylinder engine. With the standard manual transmission, it develops 160 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 170 pound-feet of torque between 2,500 and 4,000 RPM. This allows the car to hit 60 miles an hour in as little as 6.8 seconds. Curb weight with the manual transmission is only 2,512 pounds. The top speed is limited to 130 miles per hour. With the optional automatic transmission, power was rated at 157 horsepower and 183 pound-feet of torque. Structurally, the engine starts with a cast iron block and an aluminum bed plate. 
at the bottom end, a forged steel crankshaft with select fit main bearings is supported across five main journals. The crankshaft has been designed with optimized counterweights to reduce overall mass for high engine RPM operation. Durability is ensured with the use of lightweight forged steel connecting rods that have been designed with a unique cross section to minimize the longitudinal and lateral bending of the rod. Lightweight cast aluminum pistons with hard anodizing contribute to the overall strength of the rotating assembly and the engine's high RPM capability. Full floating piston pins are used for added strength. Piston cooling jets, located at the bottom of each cylinder, contribute to fuel economy by squirting oil on the bottom of the pistons to help maintain piston temperatures and reduce the possibility of hot spots along the cylinder walls or at the top of the piston that could lead to detonation. This engine is also fitted with a structural aluminum oil pan. Crankcase capacity is four quarts with a dry filter. Synthetic 5W40 oil is recommended due to the higher overall temperatures of the turbocharger. To maintain a lower ownership cost, Abarth recommended oil changes are set at 8,000 miles. The valve train features Fiat's multi-air fuel delivery technology. Unlike engines that rely on direct action from fixed lobes on the camshaft to control intake valve opening and closing, multi-air is an electro-hydraulic system that can control intake air cylinder by cylinder and stroke by stroke, depending on the demands from the standard electronic throttle control system. Actual opening of the valves is achieved by hydraulic fluid running through a narrow passage that's controlled by a dual-action solenoid one for each cylinder. When the solenoid is closed under highway speeds or full acceleration, the intake valves are fully opened, much like a traditional engine for maximum power. At lower speeds, the solenoids open, allowing oil to bypass the passage and decouple the valves. This allows for infinite control of the valves and the amount of air going into the cylinders. Ignition is through a single output coil-on plug system with double platinum spark plugs for durability. Fuel delivery comes from a sequential multi-port electronic system. The compression ratio for this engine is 9.8 to 1. Maximum boost pressure is set at 18 psi, while maximum engine speed is limited to 6,500 rpm. The turbo's induction system includes two intercoolers, located behind the driver and passenger side air inlets of the front fascia. The intercoolers work to remove heat in the air charge that the turbocharger generates while compressing incoming air. Reducing that heat provides a cooler, denser air charge that helps increase power. The Abarth also benefits from several engine system component upgrades. On the intake side, the engine features an Abarth-designed fresh air intake system with a high-flow air filter, redesigned air box for improved airflow, and smooth flowing plumbing for maximum power and low induction noise. The Abarth-designed concentric and double-tip dual exhaust system delivers a high-performance look with menacing Abarth-tuned sound and minimal exhaust gas restriction for maximum power. These cars sound absolutely awesome. The Abarth tuned powertrain control module provides specific engine calibrations to maximize power when sport mode is activated via the button on the dashboard. Sport mode also enhances throttle linearity and gives the steering a more weighted feel. When sport mode is not engaged, the Abarth limits the torque in first and second gears to enhance fuel economy. An upgraded electrical system includes a high output 140 amp alternator and an upgraded battery for increased vehicle system charging. When it comes to fuel economy, manual transmission abars were rated between 28 miles per gallon in the city and 34 miles per gallon on the highway. In mixed driving, I typically average between 31 and 32 miles per gallon. For optimum fuel economy and performance, fuel with a 91 octane rating is preferred, while regular 87 octane is acceptable.
Developed by Fiat Powertrain Technologies for high output applications, the Abarth is equipped as standard with a heavy duty 5 speed manual transmission. Proven on prior European 500 Abarth models, this transmission features a 3.35 final drive ratio for quick acceleration at faster top speed without sacrificing fuel economy. Designed to handle the increased torque loads, the transmission includes an intermediate shaft with equal length half shafts to mitigate torque steer. Compared with the standard 500, the Abarth features 23% larger half shafts for increased strength and to reduce torsional stress in the driveline during performance driving on the road or track. To handle the increased engine output, larger CV joints with 53% greater torsional strength deliver added durability and refinement. Helping the driver utilize the engine's power to its fullest is the Abarth tuned torque transfer control system. It's a differential locking system that utilizes the mechanical differential as a reactive element in the transmission to control torque via the brake system and electronic stability program. This enables the Abarth to transfer torque to whichever wheel has more traction. For 2015, a six-speed automatic transmission was introduced as an option to help broaden the Abarth's customer base. The transmission featured a reinforced design with more clutch plates and a more robust heat treatment to allow for higher torque capability. Sport mode also allowed for some additional special features such as fuel cut up shifts, rev matching downshifts, brake assist downshifts, corner gear hold and fast off gear hold as well as a more aggressive pedal map.
The UpArth's no-nonsense performance design cockpit is packed with unique appointments to distinguish it from a standard 500. The steering wheel features a thick rim with perforated leather and a flat bottom to provide the look and feel and increased roominess desired for spirited driving. For easier operation and to keep the driver's eyes on the road ahead, the steering wheel includes cruise, audio, and hands-free communication controls. An awesome new feature for 2015 was an advanced 7-inch thin film transistor cluster display that allows you to monitor data like g-forces, speed, fuel level, and trip information. There's also a whole bunch of different settings built in, as well as a dimming function. When the vehicle is in sport mode, the TFT display becomes more aggressive in appearance, complementing the sport mode's more engaged driving experience. On the right side of the standard cluster display is an economy gauge. In sport mode, the economy gauge is replaced by an accelerator pedal position percentage. Unique to the Abarth is an analog turbo boost gauge to the left of the instrument cluster. When sport mode is engaged, the middle of the boost gauge lights up with the word sport. The brow of the instrument cluster is wrapped in black leather with red accent stitching. Down below you have Abarth designed aluminum pedal covers that feature black rubber trim. A standard black leather shift knob with red accent stitching provides a nice feel that complements the steering wheel nicely. Unique Abar styled front performance seats feature a one-piece design with large side bolsters and integrated headrests, racing harness pass-throughs and accent stitching. Both front seats are manually adjustable with center folding padded armrests. The driver's seat features height adjustment. The steering wheel is also adjustable, but just for tilt. For a contemporary and technical look, the Abarth's center stack, radio, and climate control system, as well as the headliner and pillars, are finished in black. Black cloth upholstery was standard. Leather was optional. Either black or, as shown here, a two-tone combination of black and red. With an emphasis on maximizing interior space, the Abarth, like the standard 500, offers an amazingly roomy and functional cabin within its compact size. With built-in storage spaces, including two in the instrument panel, map pockets in the lower door panels, and another below the center console's shift bezel, you can quickly and conveniently store mobile devices and other gear. Like the standard 500, the Abarth is nothing to write home about when it comes to overall build quality and materials. After all, it's based off a compact economy car, so the lack in niceties is to be expected. I do really like how the interior is laid out. It's so incredibly simple and straightforward. It has just the bare essentials to make it surprisingly comfortable. The center of the dashboard is color matched to the exterior. With the Comfort Convenience Group, heated front seats were added, along with Sirius XM satellite radio and an automatic single-zone climate control system with an integrated Micron filter. The center console was redesigned for 2015 to make it more useful. It included a new cup holder design and an additional conveniently located USB port that's fully functional and integrated with the radio. Additional storage includes long pockets across the door panels, additional cup holders for the rear seats, and a large glove box. The latter also houses an additional USB charging port. This car has previously received some serious upgrades in the radio department. Not only does it feature an aftermarket double-din radio conversion, but there's a backup camera and even a dash cam that automatically starts recording upon powering the car on. The double-din conversion involves significant modifications to the internal dash structure, including cutting and redirecting the flow of air to the vents. The kit comes with all of the parts, you just have to do all of the cutting. While it may not have been something I would have done, I am thrilled with how nice of a setup it is, especially with having wireless Apple CarPlay. All of the factory controls and the steering wheel work too, which is awesome. The Beats audio package was a $700 option in 2015 and was a very nice upgrade over the standard stereo. 
The Beats system includes six speakers, an 8-inch dual voice coil subwoofer with trunk-mounted enclosure, and an 8-channel 368-watt amplifier with digital sound processing. In addition to Bluetooth audio streaming, Abarths came standard with Blue and Me hands-free communication technology, which is an in-vehicle, voice-activated communication system that allows the driver to operate a Bluetooth-compatible smartphone while keeping their hands on the wheel and eyes on the road. A navigation system was also offered as an option, but it was a portable system. If equipped, you'd get a 4.3-inch TomTom portable navigation device that would dock on top of the instrument panel. It would also integrate with the Blue and Me system, so you can use the steering wheel mounted controls to make operation easier. The Fiat 500, including Abarth models, feature a comprehensive airbag system to offer unique protection for its passengers to meet all U.S. regulatory requirements. The seven standard airbags include driver and front passenger advanced multi-stage airbags, a driver's knee airbag, full-length side curtain airbags, and standard seat-mounted side pelvic thorax airbags, all of which offer enhanced protection to all occupants in the event of a collision. Standard latch anchors in the rear seat allow for easy installation of compatible child seats. The rear seat in these cars was claimed to be able to sit two adults, but I think that's being a bit too generous. Yes, you can sit someone of my size in the back, but they are not going to be comfortable. It's just a small space no matter how which way you slice it. I'm 5 foot 10 inches and I don't have any extra room left over. My head touches the ceiling and my legs will not fit unless the front seats are slid forward. Thankfully, there is plenty of room for front passengers if additional adjustments are needed. The back seat is definitely usable, it just depends on who's sitting back there. There's vertically adjusting headrests on each backrest. While not in use, they can be lowered for better rearward visibility. Overhead, there's coat hooks on either side of the roof. Each side panel integrates molded in armrests. Latched child seat anchor points can be found on both sides of the rear seat. Climbing into the rear seat is made easier thanks to the auto sliding function of the front seats. By pulling on the straps on the outside of the headrests, the backrests will tip forward and the seats can be pushed all the way forward. Additional amenities include seat back storage pockets and two cup holders in the rear of the center console. For such a small car, the Abarth is really quite practical, especially the hatchback. The lift gate is lightweight and assisted by gas struts. The lift over height is 27.2 inches and there's 9.5 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seat. If you have the Beats audio group, space is reduced by 0.6 cubic feet due to the subwoofer enclosure. The black cover at the bottom on the right side panel is for the radio amplifier. A small removable privacy cover is included to keep prying eyes off your cargo. With the 50-50 split folding rear seat, you can significantly increase the total cargo space to as much as 26.8 cubic feet. A light on the left side makes it easier to see at night. With the Cabrio, you have a similar amount of total cargo space, reduced by a few cubic feet or so, but the space behind the rear seat is reduced by half. You also don't have the ability to store larger and taller items due to the design of the soft top. For a daily driver, the hatchback is the way to go as it's so much more practical. Due to the car's compact size, there is no spare tire, however, a tire repair kit was included as standard equipment. Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing that too. And make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on the upcoming content. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.